As much as I love going on cruises, there are some things that really everybody hates about it. Just like everything in life, nothing's perfect. But today, I've got how to avoid the top eight things that everybody hates doing on a cruise ship. Up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. And like I said, nothing is perfect, including going on a cruise. There are going to be pain points you encounter because you're not the only person on the ship. And sometimes... Things happen that we have no control over. The good news is, with a little bit of knowledge and planning, you can reduce these potential problems into minute blips on the radar of fun instead of a, quote, my vacation is ruined kind of occurrence. So before we get on a cruise ship, here are eight things that we all deal with on a cruise and how to get around them. Number one, getting seasick. Now, it's unlikely you're going to get seasick on your cruise, but it can happen to just about anybody. In fact, I've gotten seasick on cruises before. Royal Green cruise ships are massive vessels equipped with precise GPS and stabilizing technology, and the captain will regularly plot courses that take optimal routes for guest comfort. The good news is that even if you do get seasick, which is pretty unlikely, but even if you did, feeling better quickly is very easy if you know what to do. You can take over-the-counter medications or even some homeopathic treatments to combat the effects quickly. Eating a green apple or something with ginger is also proven to be very effective. If you're truly concerned about getting seasick, talk to your doctor before you go on your cruise about a prescription for a scopolamine patch, which you wear behind your ear during the duration of your cruise. Next up is avoiding pushy spa selling. Upsells are something that no one really enjoys, but salespeople wouldn't do them if they didn't work. So when you schedule a spa treatment on board, it's typical to be at least told about certain products you can buy to bring home to help combat whatever ailment or life-improving scenario that you're facing. If you prefer to avoid the upsell altogether, politely inform the crew member giving you the spa treatment at the very beginning that you're not interested in purchasing any products today. Simple as that, and that way you can enjoy your treatment without any issues afterwards. How about sitting with strangers? Yeah, on a cruise, sometimes there are occasions where you might have to sit with other people you don't know. Now, in the current COVID world, this actually got solved all for us, but let's talk about big picture down the line when you are seated with people you don't know at a restaurant or a meal or something else. Sometimes being seated with someone you don't know is not desirable, so if you want to avoid being seated with other guests, here are a few tricks to try. The most common scenario for being seated with strangers is the main dining room. Now, you can always speak to the head waiter about arranging for a private table. This is usually not a problem, but you may have to wait a bit longer to be seated. You will not have to worry about being seated with other guests at any of the specialty restaurants except for Izumi Hibachi or Chef's Table. This Habanyaki Dining is communal table, so the only way around this problem is to really <laughs> buy out the entire table. Probably not a practical option. And Chef's Table, as I mentioned, is again the only way around that if you don't want to sit with the people who don't know is to rent out all of Chef's Table. Nearly all short excursions are group tours, so the only way around the problem is a private tour. If you prefer, you can arrange tours through Royal Caribbean to get a private tour through something called Private Journeys. And Private Journeys is a short excursion option run through Royal Caribbean, which you can do private tours. Yes, it's going to cost you more money, but if being on a tour without other people around you is important to you, then this is your best option for you. Now, if you've been on a cruise before, you probably remember one of the least fun things you could possibly do on a cruise ship, and that is the safety drill. We all understand the importance of safety, but nothing puts a dent in your cruise fun faster than the mandatory safety drill on the first day of the cruise. Known as the mustard drill, this is the obligatory drill required by maritime law where you learn about what to do in the event of emergency. But the good news is this one's actually not a problem anymore. Royal Caribbean has completely redone the mustard drill and made it an e-mustard drill. The new e-mustard option will be conducted via your smart device or stateroom television, and it allows you to do the mustard drill at your leisure on the first day of the sailing and then simply report to your mustard station to complete the process. This new approach to safety drill is not only faster, but does not require the entire ship to stop in its tracks. And I absolutely love it. If nothing else, this is the best thing to come out of the post-cruise shutdown because it's just been a major overhaul for the better. And so the days of having to worry about going and doing the mustard drill, so much easier now. Next up are chair hogs. Yeah, unfortunately, if you're dreaming of grabbing a seat by the pool and enjoying a lovely day at sea, you may find the first step of that dream harder than you thought. Commonly, guests will wake up really early to reserve chairs at the pool, only to return hours later to actually occupy them. It's a practice called as chair hogs because they're, well, hogging the chairs up. There are two ways around this problem. Number one, you can wake up earlier than them and then go there first but that requires getting up pretty early on a cruise or go elsewhere for a chair. There are lots of other deck chairs on the ship. And if you get up by the pool deck by mid morning, you generally don't have much of an issue getting a chair on sea days. Another alternative is to look for chairs on other areas of the deck. You're gonna find deck chairs away from the pool, but still offering plenty of sun and the ocean air at the forward and aft ends of the pool deck. Some ships even have hammocks and other comfortable seating in these areas as well. So don't limit yourself 
to just the chairs you see right by the pool. Certainly, if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the pool, that's going to be important to you. But there are other seating options around the pool deck, and they actually go back and forward a lot further than you might think. This next tip is great for families out there because it's line for activities. Water slides, stage shows, and even the main dining room all have one thing in common. A lot of other people want to get in at the exact same time you do. The results are lines can develop, of course. The best advice for avoiding lines on your cruise is to either arrive earlier or later. In the case of a line for the dining room, simply wait it out. Eventually, the line will dissipate, and you can easily wait it out in a nearby bar until the line goes down. Lines for the show at the theater can be avoided on Oasis or Quantum class ships by reserving entertainment ahead of time via the Royal Caribbean Planner. If you're on a different ship, try to get to the theater 15 to 20 minutes before the showtime, and that way you'll get there before any line ever develops. Likewise, lines for signature activities are best avoided by getting there right when they open for the day or in the late afternoon when a lot of other people start getting ready for dinner. You're also going to find short lines for water slides, the flow rider, and more by trying them on the first day of your cruise or when the ship is in port and most other guests are on shore. In either case, there's a lot less demand for it. In fact, on embarkation day, it's the best time to do things like those water slides or the flow rider because most people are still getting on the ship and a lot of them don't even have their bathing suits if they wanted to go do it. So it's a great time to take advantage of it on embarkation day. Next up is packing for the last day of the cruise. It's not bad enough that it's the last day of your cruise and you have to go home the next day, but you got to pack on top of that. Again, the only thing worse than the realization your cruise is coming to an end is, well, putting all your stuff away again. While packing for a cruise vacation can be fun before it starts, packing to go home, well, it stinks. The best advice I've received is to leave a piece of luggage open in your closet and then fold dirty laundry in there every day of the cruise as you discard it. If you do this every day, you can reduce the amount of you have to pack on the final day. I'd be the first to admit this is a great idea. I never actually do it, but boy, do I wish I did it every time I get to the last day of the cruise because packing everything up is the pits. Now, how about gaining weight on a cruise? We may think we can avoid the temptation of overindulging on a cruise, but more than likely it's going to happen anyway. Whether you have a sweet tooth or simply find a lot more food than usual to try, gaining weight on a cruise vacation is not unheard of at all. Besides skipping some of these foods, there are a few good strategies to allow you to have your cake and eat it too. Number one, skipping the elevator and using stairs will burn off a few extra calories. Not like hundreds or thousands, but it all counts. And especially over the course of your cruise, it all adds up. All Royal Cream ships also have fitness centers that offer free weights, machines, and even fitness classes. Most of the gym is complimentary. The fitness classes usually cost extra, but you don't have to abandon the gym routine while on a cruise. There's also a jogging track on every ship, and if you prefer, there's some outdoor activities there as well. Now, for the main dining room menu, we'll also rotate notable options that are a healthier choice to make choosing the right entree easier for you. So, there you have it. Some of the most annoying things that happen to everybody on a cruise and how to avoid them when you go on board. I hope that you'll not run to any of these things, but if you do, well, now you have the information you need to get around all of them. Let me know in the comments which of these tips you found helpful, and if there are any other really annoying things about a cruise that everybody seems to deal with, let me know in there. Maybe we'll do another video after this one on that topic. While you're below this video, make sure you like it by hitting that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCrimmonBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.